And we've been talking about how Satan lied to us and in the garden. I've been trying to get past this and even right now I'm not standing here and God just telling me, he said, go, just go back to Genesis and let the people see. This is all he telling me, just let you see. And how he talks you out of your, he talks, talks you out of the third chapter. He talks you out of your destiny. He talks you out of your, your purpose. He talks you out of your, your life. He talks you out of your health. He talks you out of your blessing. Amen. This is the third chapter of Genesis. Amen. And the Bible says that it says uh, it starts on says third chapter, first verse, it says now. And the word the word now, uh this but this word that the Bible was written first in, in uh, Hebrew. It says now. The word mean immediately. It mean it it, it 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 relates, it refers even to today. Now the serpent, the serpent, the serpent, the devil. And I told you about the serpent where which was known as the snake. And what happened uh, during that time before the snake was cursed, he walked erect. He walked up just like this here. And he literally, and he literally could talk. Are you listening to me? And he can talk and hold a conversation with you. Now the serpent was more subtle, the Bible says. He was more deceitful and he was more deceiving. He could make you think that he could make you think that the people that brought you into this world doesn't really love you. Or he can make you feel like that. That no one loves you. And he'll make you feel like you have no purpose. Make you feel like you're worthless and make try to make you feel like you're all alone. Which is not the truth. And they try to make you feel like that God has abandoned you and that God doesn't care. You got to understand he's the devil. He's the devil. And he'll try to make you feel like and make you think that. That you have no purpose in life. That you, you can never recover from the mistakes that you made. That's the devil. Because his nature, his nature is totally opposite of God. Totally opposite. God is merciful. And he's destructive. He's vengeful and he's hateful. And he doesn't care for you. He was the most subtle. He's... So deceitful. Listen to me. Every human being, even myself, we've been deceived by the devil. In one form or one way or another. Every one of us. The only person that walked this earth that was not deceived by Satan it was Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. And we got to understand. Maneuvers. He can, listen, move maneuvers. He moves in ways. He, listen, he's not just going to come and walk up to you and ask you to give your soul to him. But he's going to, he's, what he's going to do, he's going to uh, install or infiltrate something, infiltrate something. He's going to get in something that he can entice you to get into and bind your soul into it. And you're not even knowing that you're in a cult. Are part of some secret society. Am I preaching okay right now? I, I just want you to get that. I just, I just want you to get that. And so he's a liar. The Bible says that 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 he's he's a liar, and he's the father of every lie. The Bible says he is the author of confusion. Come on, he's the illustrator. He he's the he write confusion. Come on. He strategizes confusion to cause people to be divided and confused 
and to be uh, uh, in opposition, to be against one another, husbands and wives and children and, and, and society, blacks against the whites and the Latinos against the Asians. And just, it's just crazy. All, all this stuff just all messed up because he got his hands in it. Then the Bible said God is the God of peace. How many of you can use some peace? I mean, you really can't sleep unless you just have, uh, you, can, you can lie there in the bed. Have you, I mean, you toss and turn all night long, five, six hours, but you didn't get no sleep. But there's something about when God gives you some sleep, he can give you peace. I tell you, he can give you peace. And, and I'm going to tell you, I don't care where you're at, you can still go to sleep. Peace come from knowing that you're protected. Peace come from knowing that you've been provided for. Peace come from knowing that you're not alone. That's, that's peace. And that's, you see, your, see, when you have confidence. And so my title is talking about the dirty secrets of Satan, those two dirty secrets of Satan. And I told you those two things that he operates, that every sin operates. This, the stronghold of those sins are these two things. Number one is the spirit of insecurity. It makes you insecure. You're insecure. You don't trust nothing. You don't trust nobody. You're insecure. You're insecure. You ever seen somebody like that? I don't, they don't trust everybody. They don't trust nobody. They'll go to the restaurant, though. It's selected. It selects it. It's selected. And then you have that, the insecurity. Okay? It affects your faith. It causes you not to, to trust God. Are you listening to me? Are you listening to me? And it always, that spirit of doubt always popping up. That spirit of doubt, it always pop up. Well, God must have really loved me because if he did, I wouldn't have lost my job. You lost that job because of bad attendance. Oh, uh, see, you don't want to. Uh, see. Uh, come on, just give me five more minutes. I'll let you go. And so we can't blame everything on God. We have to take responsibility for the things that we do. And so the Bible talks about the, the devil was more subtle than any beast of the field. Any beast of the field, any beast, any animal that God created, which the Lord God had made, and he said unto the woman, listen to this here, he approaches the woman, not Adam. I tell my wife now all the time, if a man come to the door, someone come to the door, don't y'all answer the door? Don't answer the door. Let Hercules answer the door. You see, it's different when it's a man. When it's man to man, see? And see, when it's a, a woman, they'll sell you later because you don't have a lot of insight. I'm not saying y'all not intelligent, y'all are brilliant. But it's a certain things that y'all, you know, don't know. And then they'll sell you all kinds of stuff and play all kinds of games, especially when you go down to the mechanics. They tell you that you need a new motor. And you just bought the car six months ago. <laughs> Are you listening to me? And so they'll deceive you. And so, and so he approaches. See, he had all along been trying to talk to Adam. Adam, listen, a a listen. Adam had zoned him completely out. He walked past. He walked past every day. But then God created Eve. And then now Eve is started listening to the devil. Now I'm gonna say something here, but you see better on. When you people, one of the key signs when a person starts listening to the devil, one of the key signs, one of the things, one of the first, is a spirit of hopelessness and fear. Overwhelming hopelessness and fear. They have overwhelming hopelessness and fear, which lead to other psychological problems. I say which can lead to other psychological problems. You got to get the devil out of your ear. You got to get the devil out of your head. And he'll tell you why you can't make it. Why you don't qualify 
They're not going to give you a chance. When you walk up in there, you black, and they don't, they don't, you know, they hate black people. Everybody don't hate black people now. Come on now. They tell you all kinds of stuff. They try to rob you of your blessings and your opportunities, and you got to keep them out of your head. Telling you you don't have no purpose to live. He's lying. You can't believe the devil. And what I do, I say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I silence every voice, every ungodly voice, every negative voice, every voice that's in my head, every voice that's trying to discourage me. I bind that voice in the name of Jesus. And your voice will be prevalent in my life. It's your voice that I will hear. You see, you can hear the voices of your homeboys. Yeah, man. Yeah, homies. Yeah, I said, right, Pastor, I don't know how they do it. They keep changing stuff. You know what I'm saying? They keep changing stuff. So, you know, and they, yeah, go on, do that thing. Jump out there, man. And they persuade you to do it. But listen to me. It's Satan that's in your homeboy. That's influencing them to get you to jump. But you got to be smart. You got to say, oh, homie, you jump first. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You jump first. <laughs> Hallelujah. And when he hit that concrete and he have a divine awakening and you say, you shouldn't have done that. But they always want to encourage you to do it. Come on, hit this here. Come on, hit this here. Come on, hit this here. I grew up in the ghetto. They never, they never passed nothing to me. They never passed no serious to me. None of that. Because my parents, they knew what I stood for. It convicted them. Are you listening to me? One day I came in the church. When I came in, I came in. I came through the door. I parked my car. I came in. And the Lord told me, he said, go to the closet. <laughs> Are you listening to me? It's important you hear the voice of God. The Lord said, go to the closet. <laughs> and Pastor Lester, I'm like, hey, boss, how you doing? So he took my briefcase and stuff and took it to the altar. He said, where you going, boss? <laughs> Paul, where you going? I said, I'm going right here. He said, Paul, he said, he said, Lord, have mercy. He said, can't nobody surprise you. He said, we tried to surprise you. <laughs> it was a gift for me. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's a gift. It's a, it's a call. And so we got we to be sensitive to God's voice in this hour. Are you listening to me? We got to be sensitive to God's voice in this hour because there's some voices out there telling some people to do some crazy stuff. Take your clothes. Uh-huh. What do you think? You think God telling them to think the angels tell them to take their clothes? You think the angels tell them to do it? I say, you think the angels tell them to do it? Come on, they quit trucking all over the internet and everything. And, and they, I said, Lord, where they grandma? Where, where is it? anybody in their life of influence that can sell anything? Who you think? Get in them. He said, and these spirits of darkness is influencing the young people. Though many of you all in here, many of you, you go days and months without ever thinking about God. Without ever picking up the Bible. And many of us treat God like he doesn't even exist. And that's the truth and the reality. Why? Because the kingdom of darkness, because of Satan, he blinds your mind. He blinds you and he calls you to have a, uh, uh, your, your conscience toward God. You block out anything that has to do with anything concerning God. You ignore it totally. I don't need all that. But when something tragic happens, you're going to call all of the people that tried to pray for you. Grandma, you remember you tried to pray for me? 
Do you still have some of that shining stuff you've been trying to put on my head? I'm on my way over there. You got two bottles of it? But it's when trouble comes and when tragedy comes, then our eyes come open. But why is it, why does it have to take that? Kadaris the shine. Why does it have to take something bad to happen? For God to get our attention. Why? It don't have to be like that. All we got to do is just yield ourselves to him. I told you this before. I told you last Sunday. In the Bible, he said, today I said before you. He said, I said before you life and death. And then he gave you the answer. He said, choose life. He said, don't choose death. Because death brings destruction. You got to understand, it's two ways of life. Two ways. There's two, there are two roads. One leading to the kingdom and one leading to hell. You have what is, you have goodness and then you have evil. You have good and you have evil. And we got to realize that. We have to realize it. God just didn't put us here just, you know, so we can have, you know, parties and hey, you know, come on, hey, whoo, you know, hmm. Uh, 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 come on, hey, come on, Pastor Les, baby, pump it up, pump it up, pump it up, pump it up, hey. Now you back there looking at me, where did I get it from? I got it from y'all. <laughs> Flipping through the television. You see, but I notice that when people, they start getting older, they don't have the energy they used to. They can't, come on, they can't keep, stay out there in a club life. They can't stay out there. They start getting tired. The energy, come on, begin to deplete. They can't, you know, and then, and then they get off, come off the scene. Then they have a time to think, and then they realize that when you start. So what happens is that when you get in your you in your you in your twenties, and you start thinking about when you get in your thirties, you're thinking about all the stupid stuff you've done in your twenties, and now you reaping from all the crazy stuff you've done. The Bible says, "What a man sows, he reap." Now, if you're gonna go out there and do a bunch of crazy stuff and think God gonna bless it, it's not gonna happen. So if you don't like your life and you want things to get better. Start sowing some good seed. Do what's right. Do it the right way. I don't blame some of y'all. I ain't clapping on that. He get on my nerve. So? But do it the right way. But you say, well, I, we all have sinned and come short of God. glory. God. Yeah, we all took the same class. And some didn't pass, but some did pass. Some made an A plus. And then some made a D. They barely passed. What am I trying to tell you? Hey, stay in the race. Stay in the race. Strive. Keep working on it. Just like, just like you went to choreography. They told you, okay, do one, two, three, four. Then, 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 then do this and then they come back. Then you go up here. They got 25 steps. And first you say, how in the world I'm going to learn that thing? But every day you was there for practice. Then finally it started to kick in. It started to click. Hey, hey, Rashad, I'm trying to preach my sermon. <laughs> it start to click. So if you're going to get in this thing, get all the way in it. Ride out the waves, the bumps, and the humps, and the hills, and the mountain, and the valley. But God will lift you up. Hang on in there. 
least you had the testimony. I took the class. They said, you took it? Yeah, I passed. Her class? I passed her class. But then she the hardest professor here. Yeah, but I passed. How did you pass? I didn't do that well in the academics. But I passed because of my attendance. I showed up every day. You was faithful. So when I was coming up, I got to stop because I got to be somewhere. But listen to me. So when I was coming up as crazy as I was, y'all can laugh now. I've been healed, baby. I don't care what you say. I hated that little short bus that would come and get me. Maurice, she was on that bus too. Yes, she was. Yes, she was. You changed your name. Your name was Julio back then. Somebody give God some glory. So, and so I hated that bus. I hated that little bus. My brothers and sisters would go to the, down, down the road to the school. And, 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 and they would go down to the road to the school. And this little bus had to come and get me. I hated it. And then they had to blow. And so the neighbors and everybody knew. They knew there was something wrong with me. Are you listening to me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody knew something was wrong with me. But when Jesus healed me, hey, he wanted everybody to see the proof of his power. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Sit down. And mama would tell me, she would tell me, she said, you never, she said, you might not get all those other awards, academic or what, but she said, but there's one that you can count on. Perfect attendance. Every year, I had perfect attendance. Rain, sleet, or snow. I was there. That's what I believe going to happen. When Jesus come back, we're going to be in church. You're going to be in the right place at the right time. And it's going to save your soul from going to hell. Thank you, Jesus. Get a Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. God got more for you than football. Amen. I play sports. I didn't put my life in it. It would crash my body up. Crash my body one round time. At least I'm a millionaire. <laughs> I know some guys. They played. The guy was telling me. He said, man, they injected me with morphine. He said, my arm was broken in three places. He said, he said they own you. He said, they wrapped my arm up and put me back out in the game. So you can't, he said, you have no say so. Are you understand? Now I tell everyone else in there, don't you put nothing ahead of God, not even her. Even though she's a child, she's a mother of your child and you love your child. I love, listen, I love my wife, I love my children, but I don't love her more than I love God because it's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's dangerous because you know what? Abraham had one son by the name of Isaac. And he had him at an old age. At an old age, his wife could not have kids. But God promised he was going to give them kids. It looked like God waited till the last moment. He waited till they were just, I mean, she had no cycle. Just, just everything was dried up. Everything was just. And then God said, this is a perfect, this perfect time. And the woman had a baby. <laughs> yeah. But do you think God gave them a child at that age where they couldn't enjoy the child? God gave a Abraham strength so he can run behind Isaac. At 100 years old. They out there playing. Even if they were playing soccer during that time in the Middle East. Abraham out there playing with Isaac. And I'm telling you, don't you do that. And one of the things that I'm afraid of 
And I'm very careful to love anything more than I love God. Because it becomes an idol. It becomes an idol God in your life. And what happens is this. You put that person's life in danger. That means God has to contend with that person for your love. He has to contend with football for your love and for your allegiance and for your dedication. So what is it that God is fighting against? Games? What is it that he got to fight for your time? Hmm? Pastor, you don't know, see, fine. Pastor, Pastor, you don't want to hear you. Just, see, fine. Pastor, you old right now. Well, you, uh, I'm telling you, Pastor, I'm telling you. Let me tell you something. I've been your age. I ain't seen a woman that fine that I'm going to let her take me to hell. Ain't nothing that good. Hello? Ain't, ain't no ain't, ain't woman that fine. It's going to take me to hell. Huh? No man, come on. Ain't no man, uh uh. Ain't no man, no. Let's be real about this thing. Amen. Right? Let's be real. Can I be real about it? Together we stand, but divided we fall. I'm hoping we can go to heaven together, but not the same day. You first. I'm done. Now, Father, we bless and we thank you. A lot of it said. Thank you, God, for what you're doing in Leonardo. Thank you for what you're doing in your, in your people. You're not done with us. You're making us your workmanship. You're making us your priority. And we thank you in your precious name. Amen and amen. Proverbs 3 and 9 says, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. For tithing and giving, please visit our website at HoustonDeliveranceCenter.com. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. And hit the bell for instant notifications for a new and refreshing word each week.